Hi. I'm a citizen lobbyist, and at one point a few years back, a question occurred to me. If you wanted to take over the world and gain complete power, what would be the most powerful, the most potent thought that you could put in people's heads if you wanted to take over the world? The thought might be, nothing I do makes a difference. What I want to speak to today, a question we've been asking is, what's my role? What's our role in climate change? And I want to answer with politics. The difference that we can make in climate change through politics. As ordinary American citizens, we have a right that much of the rest of the world actually does not enjoy. We have the right to create change with our political voices, changes in policy, changes in spending, changes in practices of those outside of government, changes that affect not only ourselves, but the whole world. I don't say this out of complete naivete. For the past 20 years, I've been speaking to Congress as a member of a grassroots lobby. And I kid you not, we've had great success. We don't historically want to forget the success that government action has taken, has achieved in the environment. The Clean Air Act dramatically reduced smog and acid rain and removed the neurotoxin lead from gasoline. When Congress passed the Clean Water Act, it declared it was in our national interest to raise the standard of quality, the quality of water throughout the US. These changes didn't just happen because it suddenly seemed like a good idea. They happened because of political action. They happened because many, many people demanded change through community actions, lobbying, excuse me, community actions like rallies and protests and meetings, things in the media, writing letters to the editor, op-eds, editorials, and meeting face-to-face with members of Congress and lobbying them, developing those relationships. Part, not all, but part of the change that needs to happen through to mitigate climate change must happen through government action. When you hear taxation, think government action. When you hear regulation, think government action. But government action rarely takes the form of big, bold initiatives. We know this. Success is incremental. It happens as a matter of compromise. It's the result of negotiation. It's messy. It's imperfect. It's slow. And we build on that. Over time, government can achieve enormous change. And though time seems like the last thing that we have, as we've been hearing today, when we think about climate change, we can't ignore the role that government action plays. So before I go any further, let me address money in politics, because it is one of the biggest places where we become most cynical and discouraged when we think about lobbying in Congress. Yes, money does have an influence in politics. It's important that we recognize that. It's important that we do something about it. But Representative Elijah Cummings of Maryland said it best when he said, it's not that money doesn't have an influence in politics. But money has an influence in the absence of citizens speaking up. He said, we give up far more power with our silence than is ever taken from us by money. It's kind of like that, that uh, bumper sticker about civil rights. That's OK. I wasn't using my political power anyway. So what do I mean by political action? I don't mean voting. Voting is important. It's important who's in office, who's get, who gets elected. There are politicians who deny climate change exists. And there are others who are very supportive of legislation. And there are many in between. But voting is a pretty low stakes political action. By political action, I also don't mean signing a petition or sending an occasional canned email. Such small actions can help. And when enough of us do it, do it at once, it might do a bit of good, but we don't need a bit of good. We need a lot of good. We need a lot of change. So what I do mean by powerful political action is taking the time to get to know our members of Congress and their staff, meeting with them face to face, 
learning what's important to them, what they care about, and telling them what's important to us and why. Being there as persistent, respectful, educated, persistent, organized, persistent citizens who will hold them to the high ideals for which they ran for office. Are there politicians out there who won't listen to us? There are. In the time I've lobbied Congress, it definitely has become more partisan. But there are few who won't listen. Here's one thing that I learned early on in my lobbying. It's pretty rare, in fact, I think it doesn't happen that someone gets their mind changed by someone else saying to them, you're a jerk, and I don't believe anything that you do, and you're completely wrong. It, it doesn't happen that way. In my lobbying, I try to remember that the person I'm speaking with, the representative, the senator, their staff member, likely believes deeply in what they're doing and probably works 12 to 14 hours a day. I don't have to agree with everything that they say or do, but there's few with whom we cannot find some common ground, especially when we respectfully bring them good, solid arguments and when they realize we're not going away. Even more, I want to remember the members of Congress who do support taking action on climate change. They need us. We can't leave them hanging. They need us to create the political will to make the room for them to act boldly. The evidence for climate change is mounting, and the ideas for what to do are getting better and smarter and more urgent, but they are not well known. Even members of Congress who are likely to be supportive have many, many other issues competing for their time. They're, they and their staff need to learn from us. Remember, every single day, someone is meeting with your member of Congress and telling them what they think is important. Wouldn't you rather it be you? Don't try this alone. <laughs> What we can't do in ones and twos, we can do in the hundreds and thousands. By joining one of the many groups that are lobbying on climate change, we can use our time and our energy and our voices and, and be supported and organized by a few savvy staff who negotiate the mechanics of change, who write legislation who plan actions, who generate editorial packets, who organize congressional briefings, the things that drive the change in politics. The other reason not to do it alone is because it's really hard. And when we have others to work with, it's fun. It's a lot more fun, and fun matters. So on a final note, leaving aside the fun, at some point, some of this may have provoked some cynicism that you have about politics. So what about cynicism? What's key is what happens to our likelihood to take action when we're feeling cynical. I have to overcome my cynicism every single day in order to take action. Inspiration doesn't happen magically. I create it over and over. And it's harder when I'm listening to the news a lot. There are very strong messages out there that nothing that we do makes a difference, particularly in politics. I want you to consider what happens to you when you believe that thought. We don't have the luxury to believe that nothing we do makes a difference. I offer you this quote, powerlessness is the most dangerous illusion a person can have. For those of us with voices, reasoning, and a bit of chutzpah, and who live in countries where we have the right to make our voices heard in the political process, we have the responsibility to overcome our cynicism and to speak. Thank you. <laughs>